What about Cosrow? If you had to guess Cosrow, who would you guess Cosrow is? Because again, I know what the people voted before. Ladies and gents, welcome to the third place match here in Hidden Cup 5. And uh, wow, we have Cosrow opening it up, picking yellow. And Kazra has never picked yellow so far in Hidden Cup. We were speculating on who this Kazra character might be. So maybe this is the Viper confirmed. I know there's a lot of Viper fans out there who really don't want to believe that he is out. They want to believe that he is in the finals as Alexios Komnenos or Vasco de Gama. We'll see about that after the final and, of course, after the reveal. It should be amazing. Now, we've got Kamur here for Kazra. We've got uh, Britons then for Gajimata here on Bypass. Really interesting matchup, actually. Um, you know, usually we see a lot of gunpowder or monk civilizations on this map. So we've seen Spanish in Hidden Cup 5. We've seen Turks in Hidden Cup 5. We've seen, like, Armenians here. But neither of these civilizations really scream heavy monks or or heavy gunpowder. Um, I guess, technically, the Khmer can get gunpowder later on, but it just doesn't feel like a natural thing to do. But both of these civilizations are very natural for the map still in their own right uh the Khmer can skip steps and go up through the ages you don't need to build required buildings which means they will have a much faster castle age time if that's what Kazro chooses to go for it feels very very flexible very easy for the Khmer to also mix in scouts to fight for map control to maybe try and get some relics now Gajamata with Britons has cheaper town centers once castle age comes in and then has archers with ridiculous range. I would say the Britons want to play maybe towards the middle here, if anything. Because, you know, the outsides of the map, it's going to be really hard to contest if you are a slow civilization like the Britons. And if we can take it off their fog of war for a moment just to look at the other areas of the map. We're going to have food. We're going to have gold, stone, everything on the sides of bypass. And this, it looks like an area that you might want to go out to and, and boom in. But actually, uh, the reasoning behind this, the reason we added all that food there, guys, is because in the rare instance that we actually have someone go YOLO through the middle, I wanted the player who escapes to have resources to go to. So I, we did see that situation actually against Cosrow. We had King Steven castle dropping without Loom against Cosrow. And then Cosrow, I believe, was Portuguese in that game, was able to escape. Yeah, stay, stay humble here, folks, with your guesses. <laughs> And welcome in here. Like I said, I'm going to cast this best of five solo. We're going to move into the final. I'll have Dave with me for the final, as always. But an extra thousand dollars here on the line and a little bit more guessing opportunity. What is this? I don't know if that was intentional from Kazra. It looked like he was blocking the ostrich with a goat. Has anyone throughout Hidden Cup 5 tried to get their friends into it? Maybe their spouses? Try and explain to them the game? Has there, have there been any attempts there? I, I'm wondering how that has gone. Maybe that's something you can send me on Twitter at some point when I'm when I'm not casting anymore. I can look through. Looks like a lot of people are saying yes. I just there's certain things that would be very difficult to explain. I imagine I saw some memes about uh, this type of thing on my sub on, on, not on my subreddit. Sorry, on the subreddit. But it's like. You're trying to explain the complexities of Age of Empires 2, and then you show up, and the caster is talking about an ostrich getting blocked by a goat. If anything, it's probably my fault. But still, I can imagine there are some instances where they like you kind of get them interested, and then they're like, oh, I'm going to pay attention now. And then they're like, okay, this makes no sense. Like, why is that cat? Why are people doubting the castle? Why, why is that? Why is everyone spamming ones? This makes zero sense. By the way, I do have a video. It's called What is 11? Um, I made that video because I accidentally texted many, many people with Age of Empires 2 taunts. And I got tired of explaining it. Now, I've done this for 10 years now. So at this point, someone knows if I text them with a 1, it's yes. Or a 2, it's no. Uh, 11, it's laughing. Right? They know that. But uh, I had viewers tell me like, oh, go oh, no, what have I done? I just texted 11 to my boss. And he was really confused. Do I let him know I'm a massive nerd? You know, those types of situations. <clears throat> so that video is out there if you ever want to, you know, be like, oh, this is, this is why I said that to you. Now, 
a little risky here from Gajimata. You should know that the Khmer are going to be up a bit faster. And Gajimata is likely to lose this scout at this point. And Gajimata knows that. The faster Feudal Age means the faster scout and the extra attack. There was no realistic way for Gajimata to get home. And there's the Castle Age time for Khazral. If you want a really fast Castle time, play the Khmer. The real weakness of the Khmer is, what do you do with it? Um, they have strong elephants, but elephants are really expensive. Other than that, they lack Bombard Cannon like a lot of civs have. Their tech tree is definitely a bit more awkward. So as far as the player guesses go, there is a player who played Khmer before it was cool. I'm just going to say that for those that, those that know. Um, just to add a little bit more teasing in there, I submitted my guesses already. I don't think this yellow is a bait. I actually think that this yellow player here, this Cosrout player, could be the Viper. I think Gajamata. I mean, Gajamata is really the biggest story of Hidden Cup 5. Uh, I voted Tato all week. But I didn't see a lot of Tato tendencies come round two and come, you know, the semifinals. In all honesty, I think maybe Gajamata is not Tato, which makes you think, where is Tato? Who was Tato? Is Tato Vasco de Gama or Lexios? Lots of things to think about here. We're going to see scouts now from Khazral out in the fields. And Gajimata is also going to contest in some ways for map control. So this is probably just going to be like a scout game, a boom game. In some ways right now, it's going to look really good for the Khmer. Just because... Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Oh, wow. That's a siege workshop from Khazral. Okay, so I just assumed that this was going to be a second TC. The scouts go out to get relics, and I'm pretty sure Gajimata is assuming the same. This is going to be a push. And I don't think Gajimata is expecting this. It just feels very... I don't want to say it feels very unnatural, but I mean, pros typically, if they're making scouts like that, are not using the scouts through the middle here. A lot of aggression coming here from Khazrao. He's going to go Scorpion. So, Khmer Scorpions are really strong. They have extra range. The issue with the Scorpion is it doesn't have as much utility again. Oh, God. Okay, Gajimata knows what's up now. Actually, Gajimata has a decision to make. If he tries to go back home, he will open the gate. And he would let Khazrao through. His scout sees the Scorpion. Scout's trying to kill the Scorpion. Khazrao might need to try and block here to not allow this to happen. Losing the Scorpion would be painful. He doesn't lose the Scorpion. Gajimata knows about that, which is good. And now he's going to need to protect himself here immediately. As we see Light Cav, we have a Ram. We have Villagers here from Khazral. And the TC goes up for Gajimata. Gajimata is being very casual about this. Light Cav are about to be through. No Quick Walls for Gajimata. And Khazral in an amazing position to deny this TC. The Quick Walls have to happen. Quick Walls do happen. But Loom isn't in. Oh no, Gajimata! This is brutal, dude. So, players just aren't expecting the pressure, right? Gajimata did queue up the loom upgrade, but the villagers are so weak without the loom. And even though the scorpions are going to go down, even though the villager might go down there for Khazral, even though the, the ram might not take out the TC, that's still four villager kills. The villager actually is alive there for Khazral. He could actually go inside the ram, and the TC will actually get destroyed. Yikes. Well, like we said, guys, more often than not, we're going to see the scouts go to the outside. The potential's there for the middle, but even I didn't expect it. I thought that Khazral was going to opt for the safe economic play. And behind this, we are going to see the safe economic play now for Khazral. It's like, you kill five villagers, just get to creating more. You deny the gold from your opponent. Villagers still inside that ram. And Gajimata, he should... I mean, the knight is much stronger than the light cap. He does have his own light cap here, but uh, it just feels like Khazral is in full control right now. I'm still waiting. Like, I believe that Khazral could be the best quick waller in the world. This villager is so weak, though. If he quick walls this one... Okay, well, villager just dies. It's going to say, if you quick wall a 2 HP villager that just hops out of a ram, that would be some next level stuff. Light cap picking off another villager. So that's the sixth villager killed, but the light cap attack should end here. And we are going to see TC number two now for Gajimata. But perfect start here for Khazral. 
in our third place match. Now, I think what this could do, though, is this is tells your opponent, like, okay, I'm ahead of you now because I killed all those Vils. And now, you know, this this gives Gajimata an idea of what he needs to do, how he needs to address this. Because he can't make the third TC. He lost the stone there when that got rams down. So the third town center isn't an option. If anything, I'm thinking Gajimata is going to have to push through the middle right now. And that's going to be something Kazra is going to have to prep for. Uh, did add a new gate. Does have a monastery as well. So should be able to, in theory, convert any knights that are there. A nice job there from Kozral. I forget if we've seen Khmer here on this map at all, but... I, I think we've seen Khmer picks for other maps. Oh my god! Okay, Kozral wanted to trap these units. And Gajamata noticed it and is like, No, dude, you're not going to flex on me like this. Uh, unfortunately, Gajamata, you need to leave. And he does leave because he sees that monk. And this is a tough feeling. Because you wanted to counterattack, but now your opponent's prepared. And if you attack that gate, you might get trapped in there. Beautiful stuff there from Kozrel. And here comes TC number three for Kozrel, who, who seems to be living the dream right now. I, I guess the dream for both players was to be in the final. But if you could have like a secondary dream, this would be the secondary dream. Trapping your opponent. Nice little aggressive strategy. Strategies your opponent's not expecting. Hmm, okay, so Khmer do get redemption for their monks, but Khosrau is not heavily on gold to be able to afford that. And Khosrau is still making scorpions. If Gajamata starts to make make an L's here, it almost looks like Khosrau won't have the gold to be able to go for redemption for the monks, won't have siege of his own, and we might not be too far removed from the gate going down. The knights and the scouts running through. We get the light cap upgrade here for Gajamata. I think Gajamata's got a good chance here. Like, yeah, Kozrael, his eco is flying right now. Has collected more resources, but... The middle matters now more than ever because of the type of game this has turned into. And as we said before, like, Britons are always going to be the one to push the middle. And there's the scorpion, there's the monk, but both of these things cannot be dealt with. Uh... And, uh, sorry, both of these things can be dealt with with Manganel. And that gate's going to go down. It should go down anyways. Now, you can technically use enough Khmer Scorpions to outrange a Manganel, which seems to be what Khosrow is going to try because he has that one extra range. But if you get hit, you lose the Scorpion. That's the problem. Okay, this is so nerdy here from Khosrow. He's actually using Scorpions against the Manganel here. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I would be so annoyed. I would be so annoyed. This is like, th th this should not happen, man. I mean, it should if the micro is good enough, but it, it doesn't feel like we're playing under the same rules here, Kozrow and I. And he advances forward with the Scorpions, with his light cap, with his monk now. Now Gashimata has to wait for another Manganel. Gashimata thinking about engaging with the light cap to kill the monks. He does pull the knights back. And the monks were going for those knights, and the light cap are going to kill that. And finally, life is fair, because Khosrow's going to get punished for this. The monks go down, the scorpions are going to go down. And honestly, could have been a bit better there for Khosrow. He's going to save that scorpion. But now the next Manganel's on the way. Now, he did buy himself a little bit of time. So now you're in a situation where you can... Your eco is, is stronger than it was. You maybe have more food floating with all the Khmer farms. But this needs to be stopped right here. Reminder though, you cannot build on the... It feels weird to say sand when it's all sand, but the, the very clear sand in the middle there. Where, where the skeletons are, the uh, you know where the, where the corpses are. That's the area you cannot build on. So a castle drop there is, is kind of unrealistic. Instead, you're going to be castling kind of in your opponent's base or in your own base. Gajimata has a villager here to repair the Manganel and is hoping for big shots. Just sent a bunch of villagers on the stone, so is thinking about a castle, and it is still just scorpions here from Khosrow. Khosrow with two relics collected. Went to the outside for those. Might be getting more. Could maybe get the redemption upgrade. And has two stables now. Is starting to get upgrades for Cav. And I, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a third and a fourth stable as well. We're going to see big engagements through the middle here. 
both players making light calf Kamur get bloodlines so the additional hp is there something the britons don't have but the siege numbers there's three mangonels now for gajimata one shot on those scorpions and the scorpions get flattened like gajimata knows as long as they repair villagers alive the scorpions shouldn't be that big of a threat feels very greedy from kazrael not to make a mangonel here and there you see, scorpions are going down. Here comes the push. The light cav are through. The scorpions are all flattened. The monks are going down. Here comes Khazra with his own light cav. Now, first, he's going to start with the monks and try and kill those, which he will do. Then he could maybe move over to the siege. And, oh, jeez. Well, in the end, I mean, I guess Khazra does end up getting the better of the engagement, has a 20 villager lead, and gets the job done with light cav and scorpions. Uh, Gajimata, he lost some expensive units there. Losing monks and siege like that. I mean, mangonels are more expensive than scorpions, right? So he wasn't really able to recover from that one. And this is how it started. Like, Khazrao going through was never on the cards for Gajimata. Again, Loom wasn't in. I guess it. We're, we're maybe this is something that could change how players approach the final or something. Because we haven't seen a lot of attacks through the middle. I can only remember one game, the entirety of Hidden Cup 5, where that's what we were seeing. But uh, game ends. Kazro gets the win on the board here in our third place match. And he was the one applying pressure. Very well played to him. Man. All right. So we've got, <laughs> we've got Bengalis for Gajamata as we expected. And Kazro goes for Dravidians. Now, guys, I forget who it was. I don't know if, it, if I'm going to be able to remember this. Maybe it'll come to my mind. But there was a player who went for... The Dravidians. Oh, it's coming back to me. Okay, there was a player who went Dravidians against Gajamata, and it was on this map. It was the same exact matchup. And you know who it was? It was round one, and it was Gregory the Seventh. Freaking Gregory the Seventh has been the player in this tournament that I think is going to be the big one that surprises everybody because a lot of people were like, okay, initially someone got 4 0'd. That was probably a weaker player, but then people start to remember this is random seeding and any matchup can happen. Gregory the Seventh could have been Viper. It could have been Hera. It could have been Leary. Could be a big name that got full road by Gajamata. This is the same build order, okay? So it's very... Well, I, I guess at this point, all the games have been seen, so maybe Khazra is messing with us. But still, early Dravidians pick... The early dock here, the chopping of the straggler trees to get fishing ships out. Very reminiscent of what Gregory the Seventh did in the first round. I would guess that Khosrau and Gregory the Seventh probably are, are close friends, maybe teammates, maybe training partners. So it does make you think a little bit. Now, I'm going to be honest on what I think about this build order. I think economically, it's not great. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I think that... It's really difficult to get the most of your economy after you get to Feudal Age. But the thinking of the strategy I can explain, and the thinking of the strategy is what you need for economy here is fishing ships. And Gajamada's going to have a dock. Gajamada's going to want fish too. And because the Bengalis get the additional villagers, I, I, it, maybe you feel like you have to win water. And that's what this build is set out to do here. Now, you can only do this with the Dravidians because the Dravidians get the population space from the dock. So that dock gave you gave Khosrau plus five pop space. And the plan is just one fishing ship for now and then saving some wood to be able to, to get the lumber camp. And then from there, everything is going to go to wood. Everything is going to head over to gold. And the plan is going to be to make ships. But you still need the food for feudal age. You still need the wood for the buildings. Like Getting this timing right is really tricky here. So Gajamata with the more standard timing here on the dock. And the scouts are engaging. I felt like this happened every time Gajamata played yesterday in the semifinals. Now, Viper always wins these, just saying. Let's see if Kazra wins. Oh, three HP for both. I don't even know. I don't even know if Kazra can go back home. It's a, it should be a coin flip here. Both units don't die, and oh, Gajamata gets the win. And now Khosrau is in the dark here in Hidden Cup 5 third place match. All right. Well, Khosrau confirmed to not be the Viper. 
Gajamata confirmed to be Viper here, and ev now everyone's even more confused. And oh god, dude, Gajamata, I love this so much. So I'm glad I'm saying this when I'm not casting with Dave because I've done this to so many times to him so many times. It tilts him off the planet, but I love nothing more than to use the scout when they can't do anything about it and attack random houses, attack random docks. Like he's just sitting there. Like, what are you gonna do? You gonna come back with a fishing ship? I would love Gajamata if he encounters any building on his scouting mission here. Just give it a little, give it a little doink. To be honest, there's not many buildings here though for Kazra because Kazra's going up so quickly. Of course, that is a very weak scout at this point. The villager would be able to kill that scout. So Gajamata now seeing there's a second dock coming up. And we'll see what Gajamata does. Because two docks. I mean, this build is incredibly streamlined. He's even using that second dock for the extra pop space. And Gajamata so far has collected more resources. Gajamata will get the extra two villagers. But will Gajamata keep those two fishing ships alive? That's the main thing here. And look at that economy. There's just so few vills. I also hate the house on that wood line. It feels like Kosrao kind of disrupted his own wood efficiency. Dravidians will receive plus 200 wood when they get to the next stage, though, which is another big part of this build. This is why I think only the Dravidians can do this. And those fire galleys are, are going to be out before Gajimata, or around the time Gajimata queues up his first one. So this build should lead to Kosrao having two fishing ships, killing two fishing ships, which evens out the eco count. And of course, there's the potential then to dominate water fully, and then you can have six, eight, ten fishing ships and, and then compete with the Megali economy. Now, what happens to Gregory the Seventh? against Gajimata. Now, this was like seven days ago, and I don't know if you guys were here for every day, but just to explain, it was the same thing, but then Gajimata came back on water. So Gajimata has faced this before. So it was uh, excellent patience from Gajimata and good timing on a demo that ended up exploding some of Gregory the Seventh's fish. And then in that case, of course, the fishing ships weren't alive. Much longer for, uh, sorry, for uh, Gregory the Seventh. And things were pretty problematic from there. That villager was just repairing the fishing ship, just trying to be patient and buy time. Wow, what great stubborn play here. Keeps the fishing ship alive. I mean, good luck fishing out there, but still. A demo here from Kozral. Bit of a traffic jam out here. And we have the demo land. That should lead to a kill. The fishing ship actually blocked off, though, so the villager could repair. Again, Gajimata being very stubborn. That is a weak villager. And Kazrael getting exactly what he would have wanted here on Bay. Two fishing ships alive. Still can't justify adding more of them. But nice situation. Resources collected is pretty close. You know what's wild to think about this? And I, I realized it coming into Hidden Cup, but I'm not sure if you guys did. So we had so many civilizations introduced to the game between Hidden Cup 4 and Hidden Cup 5. And we have seen a lot of those new civilizations utilized here in Hidden Cup 5. Oh, man, man, big demo. But yeah, Bengalis and Dravidians weren't in the game three years ago. And so it was never an option here. You know, it was, there were less options to go for. So this is a brand new build with Italians and Mongols. Everything we've seen from Italians and Mongols this tournament, we saw from Bay all the way back in Hidden Cup 2. Demo. Oh, man, that's a waste of a demo right there from Kozral. You need your demo to at least connect with a ship. Nice micro there from Gajimata, who still just wants to stay alive. Like, he's waiting for a big demo himself. Oh, God, loses the villager there. Also takes some losses on the ships, but he has his own demo, and the demo connects. And, man, we, we've had quite a few big demos here for the last few moments, and now where is Kozral going to go? Kozrael is going to lose the ship there. All these ships are so weak, though. And Kozrael loses one. Kozrael is going to lose two. And we've kind of reset here. Now, what we don't look at is we don't look at the farming eco. We don't look at how these players are transitioning their eco behind it. We're just looking at the fights. Res Collected tells me it's quite close. 
Seems like the berries in the farming eco is similar there. And sometimes this is a situation where you end up seeing the market come up rather early. Because you do have quite a few villagers going to gold for these ships. We will see players just buy the food sometimes. So a little sloppy here or there on water. But the eco KD is solid for Khazra. He killed two fishing ships and he killed a villager. Also, they've both done an excellent job with their with their TC production. Just 10 seconds of TC idle time here for Cosrail. I just... If I were to describe these players and how they played in Hidden Cup, I would say Cosrail is creative. Creative and adaptive. I would say Gajamata is a freaking fighter, man. Gajamata has had so many situations where things should fall apart turn into advantages for him this tournament it's crazy and here's another example of it gajamata has not given kazrael full water control gajamata holds on i think the semi-final was another good example of that from gajamata gajamata was down 3-0 in the semi won two games straight could have won three games straight taken it to a seventh game like it's just so tough to break gajamata which is such a great trait to have Obviously, you, you prefer to have, like, the creativity and the strategy as well. I'm not going to say that Gajimata hasn't been creative or strategic. Of course, you do have to have that element to your play. But Khosrau's on the way to Castle Age, and Khosrau doesn't have water control, which is what Khosrau would have wanted here. Remember, no scout to scout the map either. Oh, we have a gate there. We have a gate, and the scout went down. So, gate went up to funnel the scout into a villager, and the, the little bonk happened there. Khosrau beautiful plays which immediately leads to everybody screaming viper <laughs> uh, i mean okay chat i agree with you guys but also can we please all recognize that the top 16 players in the world can all place one gate can we can we acknowledge that for a second okay now you're gonna laugh when i say this but i i could have done that one okay I, I actually could have done that one. I'm pretty sure. You just you just place the gate. It's it. It's it. It's not quick. It's a three HP scout. You need one hit. Okay, don't laugh that much. Jeez, don't don't laugh that much. She settle down, people. Settle down. All right. Well, to make myself feel better, uh, Muscala, thank you for the fifteen dollar dono. It says thanks for all the great content you provide, T90. Glad that you make the AWE community so alive. Nevertheless, not happy you were saying that this can beat the last hidden cup. Hope is the V of L. Hope is the V of L. I don't know what the last part means. Listen, I, I don't know. It could be, guys. It could be. I'm treating it as such. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it could be. All right. And I've enjoyed so much of this one. I've had so much fun. Looking forward to this being an amazing day. I have no clue what the end of that message was, but thank you. Someone just donated, said, on the plane to the USA meetup now. You are on the plane now? Okay. All right. Somebody's going to be a little late, people, at the USA meetup. Donating from the plane. I don't know if that's a troll or what. But look at Khosrau back on water. That's pretty epic anyways. And Khosrau says, how dare you doubt me? Khosrau says, this is my water. This is my area to fish boom. Drops TC number two, TC number three. Knowing Gajamata, Gajamata is going to hold on here. Tries to with a couple demos. But pretty close game here, guys. Really close. I mean, the, the resources should be set up quite nicely for Gajamata to be able to do some pretty nice things as well here. I am noticing, though, that Gajimata doesn't have a uh, stone right now. And so Gajimata chose to sell that stone to go up to the next stage, may buy it back, but cannot afford a TC right now. And Khosrau is already on three. Gajimata will get the upgrades, though. There's a lot of weak ships there for Khosrau. One demo here could be disgusting. There's, there's nowhere to run, right? You don't have a lot of areas to really flee. And here comes Gajamata. We've got the demos coming in as well from Khosrau. We're going to see big booms on either side. And this is all so the opponents can't fish. And there's probably less than a thousand food available at this point. 
pretty close. I, I can't really call this one. Great micro from both to avoid big demo shots. They've kept their ship spread out this whole time. Not easy to do. It's very easy to take the lazy approach and just patrol in and hope for the best. But these guys micro at every last unit. And Kazra holds on. Okay, so... Gajramata has scouts on the field and has gone for a forward monastery. Now, that monastery position can actually be nice to convert some navy, potentially. And the scouts could pick off some villagers here. I think at this point, they both committed so much to water, they don't want to give up on it. But I do question whether or not it's really worth it. Kozral, no loom, loses a villager and realizes, oh, shoot, I don't have loom. And it's going to queue up loom right now. And so the scouts pay off now for Gajramata. Gajamata didn't have Loom in the first game and wasn't expecting scouts and got punished for it. And here we go. Will we see a quick wall? We will not see a quick wall there from Kozrel. Messy wood line, messy situation. Of course, there's the water to worry about as well. Gajamata being very patient. Gajamata still defending on water here. Villagers have gone down to the light cap. There's going to be monks. There's going to be siege. This has been incredibly greedy play from Kozrel. Does bring over a Spearman, though. It is one TC for Gajimata, but the Vil count is 50 against 55. That's due to the excellent job from Gajimata to keep that one TC producing. And then also the Bengali bonus, right? Four of those villagers were just from going up to the next stage. Feels like Gajimata could kill some of Khosrau's fishing ships. Also, Khosrau doesn't know the siege push is about to begin has no intel on that really tricky area to defend right now i would prefer gajamata's position but if all cause needs is one defensive moment and then suddenly the position starts to look stronger and you need recognition there's going to be monks and you need light cap okay i changed my mind i like cause position a lot here spears to defend a couple light cap out there for the monks this is tricky against bengali monks though Yo, Heisenholf, nice to see you, man. I did see uh, did see you in chat before everything started. Nice to have you back. Villager goes down. So now Khosrau is basically out of wood in his main base. And then he's going to get surprised with a big siege push on his face. The siege push is already there. There's the light cap. There's the monk. There's the siege. Can't take his stone anymore. Losing his fish. Things are falling apart. Gajamata. Still 1TC, but you can tell that with how he's focusing, right? He's able to focus so heavily on things here because he doesn't have the distractions. Here comes the, the scouts, though. Soon to be light cap here from Kozrel. Kozrel ends up getting the kill. Did also take some big shots, though. He's going to split away. I don't know where that monk is going for Gajimata. Uh, he's trying to convert a spearman. Monk goes down to the TC fire. That's not something I expected to say today. And now three mangonels here for Gajimata. He does not have spears here, though. If he had some spears here to protect this push, this could be really nice. It feels like Khosrau could still defend this. It's going to come down to how good the attack grounds are. Also, of course, there could still be conversions from Gajimata. Right now, Khosrau can't take stone. It's going to drop TC number four as we see a loop around from Khosrau. Kind of tricky for him to surprise Gajimata right now because of how Gajimata built these buildings. He can see that coming. Now, losing the villagers wouldn't be ideal. But he's tracked that the whole way through. And Gajamata all over Khosrau at the moment. He's ready. He sees the spears. He'll convert them. He backs away. He can go right back to the TC. This production from Gajamata is insane right now. And Khosrau kind of falling apart. Again, look at the vil count, guys. It is one town center play from Gajamata. He's had one minute of TC idle time this entire time. It's over 11 minutes for Khosra, which can happen when you have so many TCs so early. It's really hard to have the food eco to produce consistently, but that is an extremely high idle TC count. I think Khosra was expecting to find moments where he could take good engagements, and his opponent is always waiting for him. Here we have it again. The pathing has been really awkward here for Khosra. He's receiving a lot of hits from the opponent's light calf. He'll go in and he'll kill the monks. Still can't see the siege. He does have a light cap counterattack actually happening at Gajamata's base at the moment, though. 
So we've got the siege there. This could be lead to a big distraction. The light cavern made it through. It doesn't seem like they've done too much though. And then oh, oh wow, that split from Gajamata was ridiculous. He actually noticed that and had to split away from it, but it still doesn't mean he's out of the woods yet. Tries another attack rounds. Siege is kind of weak right now. Here come more light cav. Kozrael kills that one. There was four before. There's going to be zero now. Light cav moves in for the monk. Kozrael's holding. Kozrael still is the villager count. Kozrael still, you know, pretty good eco setup. Does have some exposed areas, but could stabilize, maybe get into pikemen and defend from this. But I'm, I'm also seeing some sloppiness here from Kozrael. Villagers headed back out to the attack. There he defends. Here are the villagers I was talking about. Okay, so let's talk Ideal Age of Empires 2, okay? Ideal Age of Empires 2, obviously, win. Haha, <laughs> I mean, duh. But, I mean, beyond that, right? How do you get, how do you accomplish that goal? I would say that the Ideal, and some players don't agree with this, but you want to have a solid army investment, and then you add the TCs afterwards. Now, many times you see that and players who are good defensive players will kill your army investment and then their eco wins games. So that's kind of the, the tricky thing. But I would say that the way Gashimata has played this has been ideal. You go army control and then you expand the eco afterwards. Kazrao has said, I'm going full eco and then I'm, I'm going to have eventually have the resources to stop you. But I would say in some ways he has been punished. And this honestly feels like this game could go on for a long time. If Kazra doesn't find a way to clear this up. If he loses more of his TCs. This could be brutal for him. He's trying to find the monks though. Does end up finding a couple kills there. These are Bengali monks though. They're very strong. The siege is still pushing his TCs down. And it's going to be pikemen for Kazra. Sneaks in with his own siege. Gajamata doesn't see it. And this is the defensive side. The defensive side of it is, okay, come at me, but I have the eco lead, and I can do just that. Two Manganels go down. Gashimata doesn't want Kozrael to have a chance to, to do that again. And so the Manganel gets sniped immediately. There's also another Manganel, and then Gashimata and Kozrael are both microing, but Kozrael again with beautiful micro, and now he's going to swoop in with his light calf. He's going to try and kill more monks. I feel like we've seen this three times over already. He's going to kill one, two, three, four, five monks. Also defended from the light cav the whole time. And Kozrael's on pikemen now. I mean, you know, the pikes in combination with the light cav feels very strong. Monks shouldn't be able to have too much freedom moving around with the light cav. And then the light cav from Gajimata shouldn't have too much freedom if there's pikemen around. Another monk goes down. Wow. Again, it's like when you can... Kozrael has played greedy here in some ways. But when you can get away with this, why not do it, right? Very impressive stuff from him. And I just love the pros and cons of it. It's what makes the game so interesting to me, right? We have seen the positive for Gajimata be map control. The negative, of course, would be... In some ways, he hasn't had the eco. I still think with he's, he's been able to maintain... A decent eco count. Remember, this is Gajimata we're talking about. And Gajimata isn't going to have one bad fight. And just give up on the push. He's going to continue. And I think if he can get redemption to convert his opponent's siege. As well as maybe just like keeping his monk mass next to his own siege. At this point, not even moving around with the light cav. It could be really nice for him. Interesting move for Kazro in the north. He seems to be looking around with a couple extra units to see if he can find any kills. He's running around. He hasn't found anything there yet. I just see the movement on the minimap. Redemption's on the way for Gajimata. Guys, what a game. 93 villagers against 89. There's a couple fishing ships for Gajimata, but that shouldn't really mean too much at this point. Gajimata is known for his forward castles on this map. So we, we could definitely see that happen if he takes good fights here. But that's a lot of pikes. He's actually not fully walled there. Kazra doesn't know it. There is actually a hole. We'll see if that anything happens there. But now that Redemption is in, the monks try and convert the Manganel. And the Manganel gets deleted. Oh, God. This is so intense. 
Because Khosrow wants a castle. He wants a big fight and a castle to protect this eco. But look at this push again. Actually, very interesting. Either Khosrow's doing a loop around to try and hit this from the other side, or he's going for a counterattack with Lightcap. It feels like a loop around to me. He is kind of showing his hand attacking the houses. Gajamata's got a whole city here. <laughs> actually really hard to go through those choke points of the houses too without getting rocked by the mangonels and there's the castle people have been saying this is viper but we might find out it's somebody else here in a second the like have are still roaming around he's building this with a lot of villagers the siege sees the villagers they're gonna go in for the villagers here will this castle go up it feels like the castle could easily be denied that's a lot of siege that is a lot of siege, but hold on. Khosrow is going to swoop in. He'll kill the Mangonels. He does lose all of his light calf, but maybe it's worth it. Uh, we have people saying doubt confirmed here, but uh, may may maybe it's confirmed to be like a half doubt. I, I don't know how that works at this point. That's a lot of light calf you need to defend from. Khosrow's on the way to him. He only has eight pikemen. It's a beautiful hold, honestly. It's an amazing game, but he needs more pikes right now. And Gajamata is just going to continue to go crazy here. The Light Cavs have bloodlines. They have armor. They have attack. This will this will be good enough to run underneath TCs at this point. The TCs don't have fletching. It's not necessarily good enough to fight against large groups of pikes, though. And Gajamata disrupting most of this farming eco. So, I mean... It's an interesting game because Khosrow will be an imp faster, which obviously brings you huge benefit. But it's not like he's going to be able to push his opponent because Gajamata has that large buildup in front of his base. That's a Gajamata castle if I've ever seen one. I don't think he thinks Khosrow is on the way to the Imperial Age right now. Oh my god, Gajamata is going to push from this angle now. Okay, type a one in my chat, guys, on YouTube and Twitch. If you would be completely dead against Gajimata at this point. Uh, this is me verbally typing one. Like, this... Okay, well, obviously you would be. Okay, you obviously would be. Because, you know, these guys are the top 16 in the world. It doesn't matter. But I'm saying, like, if you were... If we were all somehow even skill level to these guys. Because... This is insane. Like, this amount of pressure that Gajimata is piling on is insane to me. We've got Lightcap here to deny another castle... Could deny that one as Gajimata continues to build his own. Gajimata does not know his opponent's on the way to Imp. The starting TC for Khosrow is getting Manganel down right now. So he has to defend this. He also has to defend his TC. There is Siege on the way from Gajimata. If the Siege gets here in time, this castle could be denied. So it's another half-doubt castle, but the castle will go up. What a game. Now Gajimata, his castle might not complete. That completes... Khosrow's an imp able to make trebs, but Khosrow is, like, definitely very much stuck in a corner right now. Just five pikemen. <laughs> Gosh, Amada even converted his barracks. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. So, 145 population for Gajamata and Castle Age against 102 population from Khosrow and the Imperial Age. We have zero on gold for Khosrow. We have 12 on food. We have 44 on wood. He's in full stabilized mode. But he has two castles. He has trebs to be able to take out the castle from, from Gajamata. Not to mention maybe like the forward houses. And I still feel like, especially with Dravidians having the cheaper barracks upgrades, I still feel like maybe Khosrow could get to help. He could, he could treb all this down. He could stabilize and he could be okay. Now, I love the amount of vision that Gajimata has and how he's thinking about map control. But man, what a what a fun series. What a unique series as well. Game number one, Scorpions and Lycav? Just not something you would expect. Now, if this were... If Gajimata is MBL, we are going to have big problems here because uh, MBL is known for getting housed. A lot of people seem to think that Gajimata... It's not MBL because everyone seems to believe that Otter the greatest MBL, but still, it's like if you built that many forward houses and then your opponent has trebs, you could have big population problems. Remember, this is the player that did just lose a forward castle as well. 
So, uh, crazy. Um, here comes the light cav. Here comes the siege from Gajimata. Maybe towards the north? I see movement around. I mean, he's fixing his eco. Light cav are still here right now? Kills are still happening? And, oh, God, he's got siege here trying to defend his monks. I mean, actually, the monks will beat the pikemen. These are Bengali monks. They're not going to get poked to death. The best unit for the Bengalis would be Elephant Archer. Now, that is such a risky castle. Oh, my God. Uh, castle? Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, no. Does he see it? Does he see it? Does he see it? Does he see the villager? He sees the villager! This is like the third time for Khosrau! It's an almost doubt castle. And, uh, castle's gonna go up. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does it. That castle actually goes up as well. That is an important castle for Khosrau. A risky castle for Khosrau. And remember when he had 12 on food? He's up to 45 on food. He's still got pikes on the field to help with light cap. His eco is not looking too bad. There's a TC that could be denied. Now, I mean, clearly he's struggling for army control. Gajimata is just all over him at the moment. And your opponent has built, built so many buildings in your base. They're going to have vision on your eco as well. And it just makes it a lot easier for them to make decisions. You see text flying in, but you see this vision right now for Gajimata. Like, he just knows every move that Khosrau is going to make. He's definitely going to be expecting the Halb upgrade. So I think going Elephant Archer is the ideal world here. If you can't go Elephant Archer, maybe we could see something like Ratha. It's kind of a weird play, but sometimes players will opt, as we see a castle from Gajimata there in the north. Some players will actually opt to go for their own Halbs to kind of match the opponent. I don't think that is a good real a good choice at this point against the Dravidians. Dravidians are never really going to be going for units that are countered by Halbs. So that would feel like a waste. This is nice from Khosrau. I mean, to find counter damage when you have lost 50 villagers, when you have been stuck in your base for so long, is so impressive. But he still cannot move out all that easily. He is just currently trebbing down these houses. Look away for a moment now if you're Gajimata and all your Light Cav are going to go down. Look away for a moment if you're Khosrau and all your Halbs are going to be Bengali Halbs because that's a lot of monks out there. But there's now a lot of Halbs for Khosrau. He's got 40 of them. And I only see two Elephant Archers in queue. Two Elephant Archers on the field. What a game. Khosrau refuses to be broken. Beautiful stuff from Khosrau. Well, hopefully for him, slowly kill some of these monks. I can't even tell. Bengali monks are stupid, man. Like they're, they're... I don't think he's going to lose a single one, actually. They're healing each other. He then has his own units in there fighting. All the monks are going to survive and still hold that position. Still 200 population for Khosrau. He continues to get some counter damage in. He's killed about 10 villagers with these light cav. Still finding some spots. Still waiting to see if the Elephant Archer mass will get there. And Khosrau's got 70 on food. Has used this time to get 70 on food. Also, it looks like converted a villager there and is attacking bills. <coughs> this is crazy. Also, very impressed that Gajimata didn't get housed. I, I would have I would have lost those houses and I would have been pop capped massively. I I'm, I'm sure he can realize though, and he's making more. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's not a 200 pop anymore, guys. I'm not kidding when I say these things. I'm not just saying it, okay? He now has 190 pop space. The castle setup for Khosrau seems perfect. Khosrau has two relics, too. Which is kind of tricky to get in these situations. I mean, how are you supposed to raid Khosrau now when he has this castle setup? It's, it is the perfect castle stack in defense. But there is always a point with the Bengalis where you cannot kill their Elephant Archer mass. If the upgrades come in, these Elephant Archers are going to dominate unless the Dravidian player mixes in some skirms. So they actually do have Light Cap being made by Khosrau. I wonder if Khosrau notices the castle on the, on the belt of the pants here. There you go. I said it for you guys again. Because I think if he notices that, both players seem to be building up towards a treb war there. Yeah, there's trebs from Gajimata. Gajimata wanted to surprise Khosrau. 
but Kozrao knows about this. And now Kozrao is going to go for this castle. Wow, that's huge. That's actually incredible. Because now he can't be raided at home, at least easily. If he takes the hill here, Gajimata will have limited gold. And Gajimata was just never expecting Kozrao to know about this. A beautiful play from Kozrao. Techs are flying in. Castle gets Trebs down. Trebs here will go for the other Trebs. There are the Elephant Archers, though. Here's the Light Cap behind, going for those Monks. The Monks are finally going to die. The Halbs still do bonus damage against the Elephant Archers. And Gajimata is pop capped. But he won't be much longer because he's losing all of his units right now to this attack from Kozrao. What a amazing game from Kozrao. The Elephant Archers have to back away. Gold could become a real issue now. And, and in this moment, guys, I guarantee it. We are going to see Kozrao find the next area to raid. It's the perfect moment, right? Your opponent is on the back foot. Your opponent built forward castles. There's not a single castle in the eco. This is now the opportunity. I say as he's not making like have. <clears throat> um, this would be a good opportunity for him to be able to send some like have into some different directions, move out, maybe be able to find some villager kills, or go for your own elite elephant archer. He's actually going for elite elephant archer himself right now. Okay. What is the what is the silver crown for Dravidians? There's Woot Steel, which is the which is the orange crown. What is that again? Oh, the, I think the elephants regenerate with that. I, I think the elephants regen. I, I, I believe their elephant archers should be very strong as well with that. Um, so the elephants are going to heal, whereas on Gajamata's side, the elephants are going to attack slightly faster. I don't know what you would prefer. I personally would prefer the extra attack, but I think I'd also prefer to have the relics. I'd also prefer to have the halbs in front. I'd prefer to have five defensive castles with an excellent eco setup. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, who's going to be able to produce more elephants? It's going to be Khosrau. And we are seeing Woot Steel now as well as a tech. Now that means the infantry ignores armor from the opponent, which could be pretty helpful. Um, I, it's not the most useful situation you could find in the game, but it is still something that is helpful. Especially when the light calf have armor, for example. Who knows what else we're going to see here from Gajimata. But it feels like it's just going to be an elephant war. An elephant war it is. But if the Halb's getting close, they're still chewing up those elephants. Wow, it's elephant time. Let's let's go. Look at this. Gone is the, is the mobility. It's all about the chonk right now. Let's go. People, people traveled a very long distance today to be at live viewing parties to watch an elephant duel this is your life people are you proud i hope you are i'm proud of you i'm the one talking about it so if you think it's weird i'm the guy who's bringing you the chonk uh the trebs are going for the elephants i mean what better use of these trebs right now but to go for the elephants and it feels like with the attack speed it feels like with maybe the hill that things are looking better for kazrao at the moment Populations are still incredibly high for both of them. It is not a pure elephant war, as occasionally we'll see light cap mixed in. This is the... <laughs> this is the immovable object against the unstoppable force. We will be here uh, for three hours, but to hype up the slowest moving fight you will see today, it does feel like Kosra is actually winning, and now Gajamata is going to run away. And if you leave this area, you're leaving a whole lot of gold. I also like the idea from Kazra. It feels like he wants to mix in some skirms here. But I mean, if you have the food and the gold, why go for skirms when you can make a unit that's 300 HP like this? Florida Man with Mimosas. Thank you for the donation. You have broken the donation box that we've used for Hidden Cup 5. Uh, that must be someone at the USA live viewing party who is enjoying the mimosas shout out to you though thank you Ma mezzo who clearly is not drunk on mimosas for the donation as well uh elephant wars continue i mean it, it really doesn't feel like a ton of progress is being made here but i gotta lean towards kazra because again kazra has the relics kazra has the additional gold accessible 
And Kozrel has the Trebs there, too. This is... <laughs> I've run out of things to say about this, guys. I only have so many different ways to say the same thing. Oh, great elephant micro. Oh, Gajamata. Oh, look at him. Look at him move. Look at him go. Look at him try and advance up the hill. You really do need to get to the top of the hill here, though. I mean, being on the hill is such a big advantage. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can do it. We've got a castle again from Kazra next to all this. I think Kazra's going to win this game. Kazra's going to win this game with elephants against the, well, on paper, maybe the better elephant archer civilization. I don't know what you guys think. And I'm going to throw in a curveball to your predictions. Tato told me in person that Dravidian elephant archers are extremely underrated and that more people should be doing it. And this was like a year and a half ago. I, I do remember an instance where Tato did it on migration, actually, I think in a game against Leary in titans league it was maybe a year ago but maybe a tattoo confirmed moment here for Kozral. 47 elephants slowly regenerating and then gajamata's got 30 elephants with no access to gold and gajamata can't raid the opponent because the opponent has castles everywhere i mean you could still try but it feels like it's going to be extremely difficult to get any raids done and no access to stone or gold there. Getting picked off by Lightcav. Gajamata building a defensive castle just in case raids come in. But Gajamata might be grounds down here. Might need to accept that this game is not winnable. Gajamata has been a fighter this entire tournament. And is going to continue to fight here. And we see, wow, we see Siege Elephants now being upgraded for uh Cosrel. And that that should be really nice. Like I actually haven't seen the situation that many times. But if it was Siege Ram, for example, Siege Rams are really strong. I guess the difference with the with the Siege Elephant is you you can actually benefit from some blacksmith upgrades too, so that's why we see those upgrades for Cosrel. It's like $1000 on the line here. And Gajamata, I think whoever this player is will already have surprised many. I think the reveal is going to blow our minds later on today. All right, people, people, come on. What are we doing here? What? Kosra, why are we choosing this tiny little choke point to try and move 50 elephants and four trebs? Don't you know how this game works? It is it's really difficult. Kosra, not really pushing at the moment because the pathing's awkward. Gajamata get it, finding some raids. Gajamata trying to take this fight. There's the siege elephant. I don't feel like the elephant archers look sad, but the siege elephants look very depressed to be there. And it, it actually, it makes me feel bad. I didn't feel bad before, but now when I look at the siege elephants, like this elephant didn't want to be there. What, what did this elephant, what was he put through to just slowly waddle forward like that? Anyways, he gets the job done. That one gets to live. Well played, Kozrael. Kozrael up 2-0 here. And that was a crazy, crazy game. One of the best games in Hidden Cup 5 so far. I mean, the aggression from Gajamata, the defense from Kozrael, Kozrael's ability to stabilize. But then, like, Kozrael's castles, I think there were three castles that, if things went slightly differently, never go up. But instead, the castles went up. And because these castles went up, they were in the perfect position. I mean, this felt like the moment of the game right here. This castle gets denied, it's game over. And Kazra had enough light cav. He swooped in. He killed many of the monks. He, he killed off most of the siege. And then clicked up to the Imperial Age after this. Like, how do you go? Why, how do you have the eco balance to go to the Imperial Age after that? I will never understand that. And we've got Koreans here for Kazra, game number three. We've got Bohemians now for Gajamata. This is on Cup. And I'm going to steal Stats Guy's job here. Uh, quite frankly, he's done a horrible job. All of his stats have, have either made fun of me or been around about things other than Age of Empires this tournament. But uh, I'm pretty sure Koreans are 4-0 or 5-0 on Cup. I think the civilization has not been beaten yet. So odds are very good right now for Kazra to maybe get the 3-0 here in our third place match. I don't hate the Bohemians. I do think the Bohemians can, can be great in the late game against the Koreans. Um, 
the the thing about this map though is how do you want to play water and i'm not sure how the bohemians would do that i think they have a relatively generic tech tree when it comes to the water i, I could be wrong though like maybe it's one of those things where they're sneaky good on water I, I don't know why i'm focusing so much on their water tech tree when usually you don't really see a ton of water anyways it's just occasional fire ships and demos the Koreans, though, do have the turtle ship. It's unfortunate I don't have Dave here to ask how many turtle ships are going to be seen in this game. Dave, are you watching? Could you chat, possibly? Because he had a really good streak where he was guessing the amount of turtle ships that would happen in a game. Dave said seven. Okay. Bro, if we, we're not seeing seven turtle ships here. Dave gets a race if we see seven turtle ships. Seven? All right, that's a pretty epic call out. No hesitation either. I'd like to, I really respect that. A lot of people would think on it, but he immediately said seven. Good to know. So the way this map works is you've got the two separate areas of water and the two separate areas of water are very important. Right now, the players are just scouting their own base, but we're going to see Gajimata go for a dock, most likely on the one area of water. Kazra is going to see that house villager. That should tell him that that's where the dock will go. And then there's the other area of water and that area is more expansive, but it's not between the player bases. So we have seen people prioritize the docks between the bases because it is very helpful in controlling that area. And in some ways, it's actually less likely your opponent's going to be there because we've seen a lot of other people dock the other side. So but if you do dock one side, you cannot send your ships over to the next. You would have to make another dock. And right now, it seems like they're docking the same area. So this is important for people to scout those areas right now. And Khosrau is scouting really early. Now, Korean towers have been very strong in Castle Age. Koreans in general, Castle Age and beyond, have dominated this map. But I feel like Bohemians could definitely get some... They, they, they utilize some bonuses a bit earlier than the Koreans. The free mining upgrades coming in, that starts in Feudal Age. And that can help out. Also, what I would love to see is a wagon war. I want to see the war wagon against the Hussite wagon here. Scout's a little weak for Kozrao as he just goes full circle to see what his opponent is doing. And he will probably head over to his own dock now where it looks like Gajimata is being annoying. There's the fishing ship. And there's the scout being annoying, which Gajimata did in the previous game as well. I respect this so much. I am nothing if not annoying. Loom is on the way for Kozrao as we will definitely see Feudal Age... And I definitely didn't know that stats guy. That's true. This is, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you had audio on. I thought you just threw up the stats. I didn't know you listened to what I said. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, stats guy, by the way, is Robo, who is the admin of the, uh, one of two admins for this tournament. He and JBR have done a phenomenal job with helping make everything go smoothly here. Um, I... I, I don't know how much input JBR is giving into the stats. Uh, I've always considered JBR to be a little bit nicer than Robo, though. Let's just say that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but but honestly, salutes to salutes to them. And oh, JBR is doing all the stats. Oh crap! Well, I should have known. He's from the UK. With all these donations we've got from the UK people at the meetup, making fun of Americans. No wonder. Yeah, it makes sense now. Um, <clears throat> but now on a serious note here, uh, many years ago now, it would have been, what was it, Robo? Like 2016, 2015. Anyways, uh, you know, I, I briefly just mentioned kind of the idea, like what if player identities were hidden? Like could, would people stop mind gaming themselves against Viper? Would people actually play better against Viper? I talked to Dave a little bit about it, but then I had a deep discussion with Robo about it. A long time ago and eventually hidden cup one happened and here we are hidden cup five the tournament has changed a lot since then the community's changed a lot we didn't think we'd have this many people here watching <laughs> come hidden cup five i could promise you that so it's cool that we you know it's still the same crew pretty much a lot has changed but a lot has stayed the same and we appreciate you guys for appreciating that and watching it's going to be fires here from Gajimata, who's up much faster than Kozrao here. Kozrao seems to be going fast castle, based on what I'm seeing here. Because Kozrao could have rushed to the Feudal Age, chose to create a few more villagers. 
seems to be expecting to lose these three fishing ships and then also is going to lose those fishing ships if his opponent scouts it. Bass Castle into what with Koreans? Turtle ships is an option. I'm not seeing the resources look that great for Khosrow. Ooh, I actually really like the Spearman edition with the fire ship here as well from Gajimata. The Spearman will help out. It's going to be archers too from Gajimata. I... I'm going to be honest with you guys. This isn't looking that great for Khosrow at the moment. Like, he's going to lose his fishing ships. He's going to have archers coming over to his base. He isn't walled at this point. Maybe something went wrong with his build order. Ooh, that would be a huge find for Gajimata if Gajimata sees it. And he does. Okay. So Gajimata knowing about that means he can use Spearman, actually, and his scout to disrupt that if he wishes to. He could also choose to dock that side. But if you can kill the fish... With your scout, you're going to do so. Now, eventually, there's going to be a fire galley there for Khosrow, but fishing ship down. Amazing start for Gajimata. And then there is a dock from Gajimata. So, res collected should be getting higher and higher for Gajimata over time. Nice build from him. And again, archers are going to be out. Khosrow did just scout the range. Uh, thank you, Poop Octopus, for donating about turtles. We really appreciate that. Uh, another one of those moments where I wonder if my parents are proud <clears throat> of me here on the final day of my favorite tournament. They show up, they tell their friends, yeah, my son talks about video games. Then the first thing I'm, I'm doing is thanking someone named Poop Turtle. Down goes the fire galley. Here come the archers. I'm still wondering how on earth Khosrow's going to defend from this. I don't have many answers because this looks pretty brutal. He's going to have to quick wall. He's going to have to trap and the archers say just pass. The archers are going to have fletching in five seconds. And with that upgrade, villagers could start to go down. Gajimata was down 3-0 in his semifinal yesterday. Brought it back to 3-2 and almost won game number six. He's a fighter, man. He doesn't care if he loses a game or two. He's here to play. And look at the micro. Look at the control. Khosrow, again, really struggling this game. Doesn't have anything on water. Doesn't seem to have a lot going for him on land either at the moment. Definitely feels like something was off here. It felt intentional to me that he was going up later, but something with his build was off. Uh, we, we we're not going to review it. I almost feel like there's a slight chance maybe there was an issue with the boar or something that we had missed. They're just assuming that certain things are going to go well for them. Transitioning into farms now, pushed so fully off of gold. Is making skirms, which can push this back. And we'll have the upgrades now. So it does feel like Khosrow could potentially stabilize. But this is all Gajimata wanted. A little bit of damage. Then head to Castle Age. And in Castle Age, Gajimata can continue to gain a bit of a lead here. Yeah. 5-0 Eco KD. And with 5-0 Eco KD, I would love to see Gajimata continue to build up archers. And <laughs> thank you, Step Octopus. <laughs> and uh, and maybe add either more water control here, potentially some siege. Or if you really wanted to go crazy, you could go on the stone and you could go for a castle drop if you're Gajimata. But it's very rare against a player like Khosrow. You're going to have an opportunity here to be in Castle Age so much faster and to be able to push the opponent. It does look like there's some sheep there that maybe Gajimata had found earlier. But Khosrow scouted his opponent really early. So maybe he scouted his opponent trying to steal some sheep, didn't find his own sheep. Against any other Civ, you might be terrified running out into the middle right now with your archers because of the potential of demos. But Koreans cannot make demos. Bohemians can, though. And Gajimata is making one right now because he saw the skirms there. A perfect game for Gajimata, people. The perfect game. 6 1 Eco KD. A couple sheep have been stolen. Kind of a non issue at this point. On the way to Castle Age, didn't really have to use the market that much. Didn't have to adjust. Uh, didn't have to be extreme. And Khosrow might need to be extreme here 
Maybe think about a couple defensive towers. I think with a couple defensive towers, this could be good. We see villagers on stone from Gajamata, though, people. Wow, okay, thank you. Thank you, Turtle. People are having conversation via donos. I'd like to say thank you again, everyone who's contributed, joking or not. 50% of all donations go to the prize pool. <laughs> so thank you. Everyone who's come in, the grand final is after this, and then we have the big reveal. Final day of Hidden Cup 5. Gajimata's going to find his sheep there. Dave predicted seven turtles. Hmm. I don't know. I, okay, I think this castle is going to go on the, on the front, right? Good map control here for Gajimata. Nice demo there. Nice defense. Ends up, should be able to end up killing that fire galley here in a moment. A defensive castle is definitely what most players would do. This is Gajamada we're talking about. This is Gajamada. Well, no stable yet, so maybe doesn't feel comfortable advancing out when there's skirmishers out there. You don't want the castle to be denied. Now Khosra is pulling a couple villagers, almost like Khosra wants to drop some towers here. One of the players in this tournament is named Ganji. And I haven't heard Ganji's name that frequently when uh, people are guessing who Gajamata is. But it would be pretty epic. I mean, it'd be an epic run if a qualifier player like Ganji made it to the third place match. But it'd also be epic to be like Ganji Mata, you know? <laughs> I didn't think about that till now. There was someone in my chat who said that. That's pretty fun. Tower there from Khosrow. And I imagine there's going to be more. And we see the defensive castle here from Khosrow. We see the second TC. And yeah, this is just the safe way of playing it. Archers aren't being upgraded, which is interesting. I, I think those archers could be worth at least upgrading Bodkin Arrow. But oh my goodness. Split with a thousand dollar dono. This can't beat donating from a plane, but live here at the USA Watch Party. Don't forget to tip your bartender. Well, I don't know if that's you trying to tip me. Uh, when I'm there at the USA Watch Party later, just to be clear, I'm not going to be bartending. But Split, thank you so much for that. Salutes and chat, man. Things are going crazy here as we build up towards our final. Um, the archers are getting picked off. We will have some Hussite wagons, though, coming out of the castle from Gajamata. And Khosrow has made it to the next stage. Khosrow's made a couple towers there in that region. Drops TC number two, three, and four, actually. And we haven't seen a turtle ship yet, but there's our first sight of a Hussite wagon. I hope you guys enjoyed the history segments during Hidden Cup 5. Um, I was a little torn on that. I wasn't sure how appreciative people would be with anything you do in life. There's always people who aren't a fan, right? But it felt like the majority of people really enjoyed it. And learning about Jan Zizka and the, the actual use of the Hussite wagon was really exciting for me. I, of course, had a preview on most of the videos as I did have to give a lot of insights into like Age of Empires 2 and, and looked through the scripts and whatnot. But it was a lot of fun, and also Riley, who who did those videos, is uh, he's watching my videos more now than ever, and he is a big fan of Phosphoru, who who went for the wagon strategy and you putting. He really liked those videos, so he enjoyed making those. Yeah, so those wagons, they're basically really hard to kill. Historically, they wouldn't really roll around. Apparently, they'd be stuck in the mud, and they would wait for oncoming cavalry, but... Here, the wagons are getting pushed away. And I mean, guys, I'm really impressed with Khosrow's ability to come back into this game, in all honesty. Also, has a TC in this area. Is dropping some towers now to protect it. Wagon gets shot down again. I mean, the siege is taking good care of that. I, I was expecting Gajamata to be in a position to be aggressive. Gajamata instead opted for the economic approach. So this game will go late yet again here. There is always the potential for more turtle ships out of the docks. And we'll see if Khosrow is going to do that. Manganel should be able to weaken these fires. And uh, the fires might need to move away here for Gajamata here soon. Ooh, okay. So Gajamata has enough stone for a castle. I just saw some villagers on screen there. I think Gajamata is trying to decide on what to do with this castle. 
Again, if the Koreans could make demos, you might not build this one. But because the Koreans cannot, this is a good castle. There is a turtle ship in queue right now for Khosrael. And the turtle ship is going to be on the, uh, I guess, the right side of the water, you could say. The, the lower portion of the cup. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry. It's the upper portion of the cup. Okay. But once that castle's up, slowly Gajamata can start to shoot those towers down with the castle. And could really start to make a move here against Khosrow. So I think Khosrow... Okay, turtle ship against Hussite Wagon. Who wins? This is another unkillable force versus an immovable object. Or, wait. Unkillable force. What, whatever. You, you get the point. One has oars, which, which barely move. The other one's got wheels rolling through the water here. Well, I think before this gets worse, Khosrow needs to consider a castle in front of that TC. Okay, this turtle ship could be converted. khosra has got to be careful. Tower's now down. We still don't have a castle from Khosrow. I'm shocked. Okay, sailing away with the turtle ship. And there is a mangonel here as well. Could see some extra fire ships maybe. Lots of stone being mined there from Gajimata. And we're going to see a tower here. From Khosrow, just to protect the turtle. Monk is going to get shot by the turtle. Okay. Well, that's the problem. It's like, you can convert a turtle ship. But it is so difficult to get the conversion off. These turtle ships just destroy everything. Just waiting. Will we see Imperial Age? We see redemption right now for Gajimata. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We also see sneak villagers from Khosrow. We see more games in this third place match, or will Cosrell get the 3 0 before we ramp up here towards our final? Okay, there's villagers building outposts there. I actually think Gajamata wants to castle drop Cosrell. So he, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely something going on here. I think that Cosrell also saw that because Korean villagers have extra vision. Okay. This has been spotted. Amazing quick walls here from Cosrell. Wow. That was insane. See, a lot of players will just prep the walls, but when you're that fast, you can wait till the last second. Here come the Vils. The house will also give vision. Oh, God. Oh, God. There's a Manganel there. Oh, gosh, Amada. Gosh, what's the Mata? I think we might see attack grounds on open spaces here from Khosrow, hoping to hit the castle foundation when it goes down, but no. He sees this. The villagers are all exposed. There's no protection. And Gajimata's going to run away. It's actually not that bad for Gajimata because he has a monk with redemption to convert the siege. He still has these wagons. Ooh, okay. Uh, well, he might not have the wagons. He might not get the conversions. The monk is really weak. Oh no, I take it back. Oh, villagers are going down. There's a cav archer here too. No conversion yet. Oh man, this is crazy. Micro from Cause Rally is going to use both the mangonels here. Okay, kills the monk. Will lose his Manganel. And now Gajamata might go for that forward castle. But this is against Koreans. And we have a castle there. Wait, but Khosrow, there's siege. Khosrow, bro. Y'all confirmed. There's siege. All right. Well, loses some bills. Probably about to lose some more. Guys, if someone is siege pushing you, please don't drop a castle. Okay? Like that. I, I want you guys to learn from Hidden Cup. And we've got the best of the very best here. But this is a doubt confirmed moment. People at the live viewing, get your doubt signs prepared. Because this castle is a disaster here so far for Khosrow. And we are going to see a castle from Gajamata as well. We could have the double doubt. Could easily be the double doubt. Um, Gajamata doesn't have many vills. There goes Khosrow in the TC, out of the TC all the time. Monk goes down. Uh, <laughs> very hard to call. It feels like the castle for Khosrow will not go up here, though. There's too many wagons around, and Gajimata is just diving underneath here. This is insanity. We do also have Siege from Khosrow to try and deny the other castle. 75% against 75%. Villagers going down on both sides. Uh, I, I don't know if any of the castles are going to go up. It feels like Khosrow will actually complete this. And then what about Gajimata? No way! Doubt confirmed! 
doubt confirmed. The castle doesn't go up. Kazra finally completes his. I mean, at a cost. And these two villagers are looking to prove that Gajamata is not doubt. Now, let's see if that happens. I don't even know if you want to complete it at this point because it could just be trapped down. And Kazral just bought some stone to build another castle somewhere else. 20 villagers behind in the Imperial Age and probably wants trebuchets there too. My goodness, man. That was crazy. Um, <laughs> still waiting to see how things go now. <laughs> As things will settle, I mean, losing 20 or 30 villagers isn't so good for your economy. Gajimata will probably have one castle. Oh my god, Gajimata is going to try and convert the tower. So with redemption, you can convert enemy buildings. You can't convert enemy town centers. You cannot convert enemy castles. But if you get underneath the towers and there's no murder holes, you can actually convert them. And Kazral deletes that. Amazing stuff here. I think Gajamata's eco is still amazing. Like, also the Hussite wagons bring you really good value. They're really awkward, really difficult to kill. So Trebs will take out the castles, but Gajamata will still have lots of resources to fight in this one. Castle foundation gone. I'd like to see that deleted. So you get some stone back. I don't know how much stone you would get back though. And some cheeky towers here from Kazra on the side. I think Kazra is going to be happy with the fact that he's essentially up in his mind two castles. But he's got to be worried about this because the monks and the wagons are continuing to wreak havoc here. He just doesn't have an answer. We might see more turtle ships in a moment though. Like a couple more turtle ships would make sense if you're worried about fighting on water. Thank you for the gifted subs, Croco. Not the first time you've done that. Thank you, everybody, for the new primes here on the final day. Hope you're ready for the grand finals. This is just a teaser of the action we'll have. Just the third place match. I mean, Gajamata's got a ton of stone. And Gajamata also has Bombard Cannons out. Research chemistry while on the way to Imp, which only the Bohemians can do. And still being stubborn, does not want that gold to be available for Kozrael. Converted the market there, which is kind of funny. And we have Hoofnitsa being researched now from Gajamata. Wow. This Bohemian thing's here. That's crazy. I mean, after losing that many bills, I didn't think, that, you know, and all the villagers running around, I did not think that Gajamata was going to have the resources to afford that. This goes right for those upgraded cannons. We'll see how things develop here. Uh, still waiting for Khosrow to make more normal types of army. It feels like just towers and siege for him right now. That is a little awkward if Gajamata notices that. It's also awkward if Gajamata does not notice it because Korean towers with upgrades actually outrange bomber cannons. So keeps are a, a genuinely good strategy against cannons. It's keeps against trebs that become the problem. But of course, you need to have castles in order to go for trebuchets if you're Gajimata. He's got two. Here we have the micro. They're distracted elsewhere. Kozrael paying attention. Kozrael multitasking. Kozrael, stop it. Maybe he can complete that tower now. It does make you think, where was Gajimata looking? Maybe at his monks and his wagons? Maybe towards the middle now. This is likely where they were focusing. Where there's Trebs and now Hoof needs this. So I'm not seeing enough towers there from Kazra to make me think he can't lose this position. He's going to make his own Bombar Cannons here. And the Micro will be important, but... Repairing away, using his own Trebs, using his own Cannons. That's a lot of hills repairing. This Micro from Kazra is insane, though, actually. He actually took out the Treb here with his own Trebs. He's still Microing here. Bomber Cannon gets converted, though, from Gajamata's Monk. Okay, tower upgrades on the way now. So the towers will have the range we talked about. Will there be enough towers for Kazra to be able to hold this position? If he can hold this position, it should be amazing. I think he's also missing arrow slits. There's, like, arrow slits as an option. I think HP upgrades could be good as well, so the towers are stronger. My goodness, Gajamata, like you gotta you gotta just convert these cannons at this point because Kazra's not gonna let you kill them. Boom! 
two trebs go down and a ball bar cannon gets converted Gajamato with the plays even using the cannon he converted to finish off the treb and this is what Gajamato wanted still could be dicey but how on earth are you supposed to kill that many cannons right now especially when there's a castle next to them beautiful play from Gajamato yeah this is how you play it now, he did lose that area but I'm not seeing the eco really be set up for Kazrael to do a whole lot more than what he's doing right now. Maybe occasional skirmishers running into the eco. There's a wagon, which could be killed by villagers here in a second. But it's just like the, the most important thing for me is this push in the middle. Because both players are committing so much to this right now. It is all cannons. It is all trebs. It is all action towards this gold area. And Bohemians are just simply better with the cannons. Again, in theory, the Korean Towers can pick off the cannons, but when you have that many of them, I think you're just going to end up seeing the towers go down. Wagon's going to be punched down by the villager. Actually one-shotted, which is hilarious. Here, villagers are attacking skirmishers. So it's awkward for villagers. But these cannons in the middle will continue to push back these fortifications. Khazral will maybe use this time to try and stabilize, but... Azrael has now has, has to give up that gold control in the middle. Elite Hussite Wagon for Gajamata! Wow! Honestly, maybe the best unit to make here. Because we haven't... There's no need to make really like the Halb upgrade, for example, because the opponent's not going for Cav. So I, I actually really like the Elite Hussite Wagon upgrade. Full unique unit, basically, from Gajamata. I like this push from Khazrael. To win this game, he's going to need more of this. The action on the sides has given him a real chance, in my opinion. But once it's Elite Hussite Wagon, those wagons destroy the skirms. They'll destroy the, the villagers. They can run eat underneath your town centers. They could also like deal with that, basically, which is what you want them for. And slowly but surely, is still going to be losing ground towards the middle. So it's awkward. Like, Khazrael's making it awkward on the sides. But he's losing ground towards the middle now. You know, or is he? Let's see. Here's There's the turtle ship coming in the side of our screen. There's also a tower there. Turtle ship! MVP? By the way, Dave said seven turtles. I don't know if people are keeping track. But uh, I'm seeing one on screen. And then there's another one on the way. I mean, you, turtle ships might be your best option, but the worry still is the monks. If the monks convert the turtles, you're probably going to stop making them. There is another turtle. There's a TC from Gajamata. Yeah, these turtles are just not going to be it. Down go to the turtles. Monk tries to run away with the relic. <laughs> Freaking Gosrao. <laughs> Kazrael's addiction to relics in Hidden Cup 5 has been fun to watch, man. I mean, he's so greedy. Like, the, the mud flow game yesterday in the semifinal, he's, like, basically dying everywhere, and you still have random monks bringing in relics. That, to me, is, is another Viper confirmed moment here. Um, if I had to put my money on anyone, I would say that Kazrael is most likely the three-time champion of Hidden Cup, the Viper. But people still believe Viper could be in that final. We, of course, won't find out who the players are until the reveal. Okay, so now that's quite a few towers stacked up for Khazrael. He didn't have, like, three or four towers in one position. He has that now. And then when you garrison them, they can kill the cannons a whole lot faster. It feels a little weird for high-level age to see this, right? This tower repair garrison meta. But it is what you've got to do. A lot of villagers just died around the base of that tower, though. That's... Oh, jeez. I mean, he has 157 villagers, though. He could honestly afford it. I swear, if Khazra wins this game, this would be crazy. I mean, his opponent has everything to kill him. I think that elite Hussite wagons into Khazra's eco is what Gajamata needs. Because there's no way to defend from that. There's no unit out there that could really kill the Hussite wagons in the eco at this point. Except maybe villagers themselves, but then of course lots of villagers are going to die. 
in some ways, Gosh is kind of okay with this situation because he's taking all the gold. He's like, oh, okay, fine. Just let me chill here for a second. I don't need to push you yet. Beautiful micro continues here from Cosrail. Yep. Little expansion on the sides from Cosrail. That's been spotted. Just too many Hufnitsa cannons here, and those towers are going to go down. I wonder if you could even trade realistically. Be happy with losing a cannon per tower at this point. It's probably not the best long term, but when you have that much gold, I would say it's probably fine. Random scout there for Kozral. I guess he's going to make more of those. Uh, just, just finding villagers that are building outposts, but it feels very unimportant at this point. And there, that tower is going to get shot down as well. And this tower has also been shot down. Every time he takes a tower, he loses a cannon. That's what it feels like, because Khosrow's paying attention to shooting the enemy cannons. But Khosrow doesn't have that many more towers here. Also, 160 villagers for Khosrow, and still making them. Usually, you're just making villagers without thinking about it until your population capped. And since he doesn't really have a large army, <laughs> he's not population capped, so probably is what explains this. But we might have a new record for Vilhai in Hidden Cup if this continues here at this point. 163 with 8 more in queue. God, is Khosrow stubborn. Both players are around 200 population, which is pretty wild. I'm just waiting. I think Gajamata is going to come in here with some demos, and it's going to end this game. Here we go. I see a demo on screen. There should be more because there's more in queue. The cannons are hitting. The demos are going to make their way through. The demos might get taken out by the towers. But if they don't, villagers will die. Boom! No repair villagers there. Towers will fall. And Khosrow is going to fall finally. Gajamata refuses to give up. I mean, he had a, a, a massive Dow Castle earlier. It looked like he was going to lose the game. And he, he could he somehow got to Hufnitsa. He got the middle back. And yeah, again, like Khosrow, he's not going to want to call this here. But because uh, he is he's two and a half thousand gold. But genuinely, what are you supposed to make when your opponent has this army on the other side of you? All right, so here's a question, viewers. So there's a tech the Bohemians get. It's the, I think it's Hussite Reforms, which um, it makes their monks cost food. Do you research that tech here when you have so many relics and when you have the gold? I think it's actually worth it because you're not spending a ton of food on other things. But there are a lot of people saying no. It's like, eventually the gold's going to run out. I, I don't think it's a high priority. Let's put it that way. Halbs, cannons, monks all sitting here. TC's going down. Khosrow's slowly losing villagers. I mean, his pop isn't going down, but his, his map control isn't going up here. And he's going to go light cav with the Koreans. The Koreans have the worst light cav in the game. They're lacking attack upgrades. They're lacking HP upgrades. And they're lacking armor. So, not a situation that makes you all that excited for Khosrow's position. Bohemian Halberdiers also do additional bonus damage against Cav. So it's like you've got the worst Cav in the game, and then your opponent has Halb. Mm. There's a lot of money on the line here. There's a lot of pride for these two who would have wanted to be in the final today. So Khosrow continues to fight, but... Uh, uh, a turtle ship sighting. Okay. Dave is really hoping this game goes on until we see seven turtle ships, but turtle ship and it's not really going to be it. And I'm I'm failing to see the win condition at this point from Khosrow. I think more so from Khosrow's perspective as his turtle ship was just stolen from him and the villagers are unhappy about that. I think it's more so he has he doesn't feel like he's been truly killed yet. He might just be sitting here like, "Come on, dude, kill me. Finish me off. Come on." My pop hasn't dropped down below 150 yet even. Come on, finish me off. And I think that's finally going to happen. It's just Hussite wagons into the back of the eco that needed to happen. Khosrow continues to fight. But you, there's no answer to these. Those These towers are there to protect these cannons here. It looks like those halbs found the bomber cannons. I didn't know this was back here. I guess Khosrow's been hoping for one big pushback. 
Mm, trying to, probably saving these Bombard Cannons, but remember when he was at 160 villagers? Now he's at 120 villagers. And that's only going to get worse for him with units still streaming into his base. He's still losing his cannons as well. And the GG is called. Dajamata gets a win on the board. And we are not finished yet with our third place match. Wow, what a fun game that was. I mean, I loved how Gajamata even played Feudal Age. Something went wrong with the start there for Kozrel. I was also impressed um, with... I was also very impressed with how Kozrel stabilized that game and maybe even had the lead at one point. Um, but it was back and forth. Then in the Imperial Age, it was the Hufnitsa upgrade from Gajamata and that slow push that eventually took full control of gold. He was just able to mass enough cannons to be able to shoot down the towers. And this was the big moment of the game where Gajimata had a failed castle here in the age community. There was a player who's known for failing castles. And apparently, this series is doubt versus doubt. This is doubt against himself. Uh, Gajimata's forward castle failed. This is when I thought that maybe Gajimata was going to lose this game. He was later to imp. His castle didn't go up. He lost a lot of wagons, a lot of siege here. He was still three minutes away from the Imperial Age. And here's a live look at our uh, Florida viewing party. As again, we've got, we've got signs here. And I, I can't quite read them. I see Dave on one. I see Quickwall on one. I see Pick Celts there from the guy in the middle. We'll see if there's Celts in the finals. Uh, Vasco de Gama and Alexios, hope you're paying attention here. Every person in that crowd has a doubt face on their seats. And then here is the live viewing party at the UK. And uh, he, that guy's booing himself because he doesn't see himself yet. And now he, now he realizes he's on screen and I just made fun of him. But what's up, guys? Let's go. Energy's high. And then salutes all around, of course, here uh, in, the, in, the, in the chat on Twitch. Also on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. Viewership's been incredible so far. It all ends today. Hidden Cup 5. All right, interesting stuff. So Arabia Game 4. And this is just a best of five here in our third place match. We've got Khosrau, who's gone for the Chinese. And we have Gajamata, who's gone for the Hindustanis. Now, on the draft, Gajamata had Chinese available. So this tells me that Gajamata might be saving Chinese for the potential Game 5. But it is not the mirror matchup of Chinese that I was expecting. And Chinese start with the additional vills. They don't start with food, though, so they need to get vill production rolling. Uh, we still continue to have 1776 jokes. Continue. Uh, thank you, Twuggle, <laughs> uh, very much for the donos here. <laughs> and, um, you know, Chinese are seen as one of the best Arabia civilizations if they are able to bring in their resources quickly here. Hindustanis, I would say, are solid. But uh, anytime you're up against the Chinese, you need to be aggressive. You need to focus on pressuring them. Base is fairly open on Arabia in most cases, so Khosrow is going to have to look to protect himself here. There is a player who likes to choose yellow. There is a player who's known for picking Chinese a lot in tournaments. And that player is a player who won Hidden Cup three times. We'll find out at the end of today. Is Khosrow the Viper? Is Khosrow maybe Yo? Is Khosrow maybe a Leary, a Hera, a Doubt? All 16 players are revealed after the final. I'm very excited. I, um, I've obviously done Hidden Cups before, but we uh, brought in a production team for this one, and I, I don't know who the players are. Nothing has been revealed to me yet, but I was given a preview of how the reveal would work, and I'm very excited. I'm struggling to contain myself at the moment, actually. Uh, it's actually quite bad for my nerves and my anxiety to, to only be casting this with solo. Like, I almost... <laughs> I have no, no moments to breathe right now, guys. <laughs> this is a lot for me. Four months ago, I was streaming on, on Facebook in front of 250 people. <laughs> and now, uh, we've got, like, over 10K on YouTube and over 30,000 on Twitch. So I'm... You know, I, I'm definitely struggling with this at the moment, but I hope things have been solid for you, and I hope you guys are excited. So, oh, man. And sure, I was on Twitch before, right? And we hit big viewer numbers before, but it doesn't mean that it, with the flip of a switch, suddenly this feels normal to me by any stretch of the imagination. This is, this is nuts. The energy's been high. 
And kozrael has been pushing in all those deer. He was not lamed at all. And he's going to be have a pretty perfect start here with the Chinese. So usually the benchmark, when you're looking at the idle TC time at the bottom left, is if the Chinese have 25 seconds or less of TC idle time, that is a good start. If you're below 25 seconds, that might even be the dream start. It's just so hard to get Vil production rolling. But Kozrao has probably played this civilization a thousand times. And Kozrao has not lost any food, has all the sheep, has all the deer. Smooth Dark Age is really what, what gets the Chinese rolling with all their bonuses. Cheaper technologies and a great tech tree. Gajimata on the other side will have cheaper villagers as the game goes on. And it's really good at one or two things. I would say booming because of the cheap villagers. And then camels. So this gets to a situation where you could force your opponent into knights. So let's say um, you, you play Feudal Age in a way where it feels that Khosrael is going to make archers. Thus, Gajimata would make skirms. And then the best answer to skirmishers would be knights. And then you make your own camels. That's kind of the ebb and flow you, you think about. Obviously, that's uh, easier said than done. But my expectation here is we just see a scout war and we see some adaptation from there. Hindustani scouts also do, uh, I guess, all their stable units. But in Feudal Age, all we're going to see is scouts. Uh, those stable units do destroy buildings very quickly. Khosrow's missed Gajamata's base here. Not the biggest deal if your opponent isn't going for uh, Dark Age builds. Like if they're going for Militia, the early barracks, man-at-arms. You really want to have that scouting. But I think he saw the wolf over there. He hasn't seen gold. He hasn't seen stone. So he's headed back this way. <laughs> knock, knock. Who is there? Not a Florida watch party viewer. He is still in bed. Thank you, Conron, for the donation. <laughs> Conron, you happen to be from London? Are you from the UK? Just a wild guess. Maybe this Conron guy is from the UK. Maybe. Guys, it's it's just noon here, all right? For you guys, it's evening. You've been up all day. Don't be so judgy. Man. We, people had to travel a long way for the USA meetup, though. I'm really excited with how many people are, are there, how many people I'll get to meet later. Um, as far as I know, it's not only Americans. Uh, I, from what I've heard, we have some people from Europe traveling over, so that tells you what they think of London. Um, <laughs> uh, we had some people from Canada fly down as well. Um, I don't know if those things are true, but uh, I, I believe just from the Discord, I've seen some people chatting about that, so... It, it's been amazing, all right? It's not a competition, even though we like the jokes. It, it's just so cool that I could do something like this and have so many people show up. And I hope it's a good time for people who who are there. It's going to be scouts from both players. Gajimata already trying to wall up quite a bit here. And Kosra will likely do the same. Pretty good maps for both of them. Gajimata looking to wall a lot faster, though. Walling with three different villagers here. And this is not showing the wall villagers he has on the other side of the screen, too. So, you know, I would feel some level of pressure against the Chinese, you know? Especially if you think Khosrow is who I think Khosrow is. Maybe you want to make things messy. But there is also a feeling Khosrow is so good with quick walling. You might not want to try and be aggressive because you might just quick wall out the pressure. And then suddenly all your aggress aggression doesn't work out and then there's a counterattack. And then you can't click wall. And basically, I just explained my attempt to be a pro player in Age of Empires 2. That whole scenario, very common. Walls are going down for Gajimata. Scouts are moving forward now for Gajimata. The walls, I think, are complete for him. So he's going to move forward pretty quickly here. And Khosrow will not find any damage. And Khosrow is not walled. So pretty nice situation to have, right? I was thinking maybe aggression before walls, but walls before aggression works out in this case. Because Khosrow is at home and is open. Chinese are so good in the hands of the right player, though. Look at the resources collected at the bottom left of your screen. It's crazy. And now, guys, normal players pre-wall. 
right? They pre-wall some of this. So when the scouts show up, they don't have a problem. Kozrael has pre-walled the berries, but everything else is open and ready to be quick-walled. And there, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? There were palisade walls. Then there weren't palisade walls. And then the scouts show up and he just goes, boop, little quick wall. And you feel that as the opponent. You feel that. You're like, man, none of my attacks are going to work. He's flexing on me. And on one hand, you want to be motivated and be like, oh, this Khosra guy is flexing on me. But on the other hand, you can't break him. So you're like, oh, well, honestly, he's so good. You know, I can understand it. I do the same. <laughs> Lots of scouts from Khosrael. Archers as well from Khosrael as we're going to move forward. I missed that stat. But I imagine stats guy has worked really hard on whatever that was. And wow, this early archer switch is interesting here. This is a lot of army here against a walled player. But great control here from Khosrael. And, I mean, if you can get enough army, you could break through these walls. And archers on the other side means you can pick off the villagers there, too. Now, what Gajamata can do in this scenario is house wall behind and try and find the reinforcements. Sometimes you're going to have archers coming forward across the map. It's so good from Khosrow not to have done that, actually. Khosrow knows if he moves forward that those scouts will find him. All right, scouts moving in. Khosrow will see this. Skirmishers in defense behind the walls from Gajamata. That's really all he needs. And he picks off an archer. Nice defense. And again, his opponent's still open here. Now all this investment here from Khosrow hasn't necessarily accomplished much. One to one here. Uh, two to one, excuse me, with the total KD. And it seems like Khosrow's probably not going to break Gajamata. How can he break Gajamata? That's what so many players have been asking themselves. How can we kill this guy? Khosrow somehow been able to do it. I mean, game number two was unbelievable. I don't know how Khosrow got that win. Preps the house walls there. Brings his scouts home. Has the spearmen around. But, you know, the thing I have to circle back to is the resources collected and that how the techs are cheaper for the Chinese. It feels like if Khosrow gets to Castlage without receiving any damage here, Khosrow is going to be in a really nice position. Double archer range from Khosrow will probably be something like crossbow in combination with knights, and then the camels from the Hindustanis could struggle. Uh, Sprout, thank you for the dono. Thank you, wannabe Lynx. We've got someone right now where it's midnight watching, staying up all night to watch Hidden Cup. Thank you for that, guys. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, donation. Donation from the uh, USA watch party here in Florida. Okay, you ready? Uh, name, sun's out, guns out. Donation message. Five mimosas down here at the Florida party. No fish and chips in sight. Smells like gator meat and freedom. London got nothing on Florida, man. All right, well, thank you, Suns Out, Guns Out, very much for the donation. I'm glad you're enjoying the mimosas. Good stuff. <laughs> These archers will probably be upgraded to crossbow. And like I said, I think a follow-up of knights would make sense, but Gajamata will be in the castle age faster here. Gajimata actually getting some upgrades on scouts soon, maybe? And adding a few more scouts out of that stable, too. Those archers have to be careful. Kazrael is just chasing these things down. <laughs> He's just like, you're not getting away, man. Continues to follow these scouts around. I like the idea of going for light cav here for Gajimata. You need something... You need some extreme, I think. You need something in addition to what a normal game would bring you, but... Also, it feels like he's adding extra scouts because he knows he's going to lose these scouts. And yeah, he, he loses most of those scouts. Now the like have idea. It doesn't seem as exciting. This has been so smooth from Khosrow here. That's a lot of archers. This definitely forces your hand into skirms. Skirms is, is an absolute must here if you are Gashimata. And then you need the camels too. So it'll probably be Skirmisher, Camel, 
against knights and crossbows. Maybe we'll even see the light cap upgrade here from Khosrow. Khosrow never went for the full walls here. Was confident enough to play open. TC number two, TC number three. Really good economy coming if those complete. And crossbow and bodkins on the way. And there's the light cap upgrade. Dajamata's dropping a, a TC in a really nice position. The TC should complete. And the TC will stop Khosrow from breaking through in that position. It's also the perfect TC. That TC actually saves him here. Losing access to that gold would be really bad. Like cab arrive. Azrael sees it. Doesn't get the kills with the spearman, but does drop palisade walls. And has a TC going up here. No walls. Is pressuring here. Killed a villager. This is so much pressure, man. And he also needs to defend at home right now. Has a camel, has a spear. I mean, this is just perfect play from Khosrow. Khosrow's playing so smooth. And what I like from Khosrow is how Khosrow's playing with aggression first and eco later. I think in this tournament, there's been a tendency from Khosrow not to be the aggressive one, but to be more the defensive one. Certainly was a little bit more reactive against Alexios, but I think Alexios is so aggressive that there was some fear there for Khosrow. Almost like there's some fear now from Gajamata. This is a best of five for third place. Khosrow would get it if he kills another batch of villagers here. It feels like he's flying right now. He's made no mistakes. It's been virtually a flawless game. Looking around, separating the light cav from the crossbows to get into the wood line. Gajamata tried to maybe trap those crossbows, and it didn't happen. And the crossbows now are able to flee for Khosrow. He's bringing his light cap back over. You could tell a couple times there that Gajamata was trying to build a house so the light cap couldn't get the freedom. But they do get free. And there's the siege workshop now from Khosrow. <laughs> um, okay, we continue to receive donations from people who have already bought tickets to the live viewing party. I would like to reiterate that as amazing and as funny as it is, it is not a competition, okay? I'm glad you guys are having fun. I really appreciate the support. It is not a competition, okay? And here comes Khosrow looking to be aggressive on the stone. <laughs> One of the donation names was American Live Viewer Honest. <laughs> the donation names are actually cracking me up more than the donations here. Get it out of your system before the finals, people. Finals are going to be epic today. Skirms pull all the way back. I mean, you know, Gajamata felt like if he could drop the TCs early with Hindustanis with the cheaper vills that he could be okay. But it's just how could he compete with this much army all the time? And now Siege on his face as well. He's, he's going to need monks. Maybe get some conversions on the Siege. Hindustanis do get redemption. But this this feels like Khosrow is just moments away from breaking this guy. And it's so, it feels inevitable because Khosrow is really not making many mistakes. That's the impressive thing. Continuous army production, continually raiding, finding good positions, lots of confidence in the attack. Like right here, notices that. We'll pull away the mangonel in a moment. And Khosrow, more on food, more on gold, more control over this game. As we see TC number four from Gajamata. TC number four is probably fine for vill production, right? You can still get those vills out, but it's like, what are you going to make to kill this army right now? And Gajimata has a monk, and he, he wants so badly to convert something, but there's always light cap patrolling around waiting for the monks. This is perfect. Because of his own siege coming in. Okay, big moment from Khosrow. I'd love to see if Khosrow notices this, because I don't think he knows the siege workshop is there. Oh, geez, a big shot, though. Okay, he's running underneath the TC. This is risky stuff. He's running underneath the TC with his Siege, with his Knights, but he will kill the Siege. And I think he believes this TC is about to go down, which is why he's going to sit here. Does lose some Knights to conversions. Doesn't, or isn't able to finish off his opponent. But guys, Khosrow's flying. We even see TC number four for him. Gajamata needs a crazy castle. Will it be a Doubt Castle? <laughs> If it is a castle to protect this area of the eco, it will not go up. Maybe I shouldn't say that. It's extremely unlikely. 
You could place a castle behind that TC, and then it just kind of stabilizes things for you. And your opponent has a lot of archers, so then maybe you could make some golems. So sometimes we'll see players delete the farms and build the castle back there, but then you give up so much ground. The ideal scenario is you defend from this, and Khazral's like, nope. How about I don't let that happen? Does micro, but loses to Manganel. Nice job, Gashamata. Manganel continues. Big shot there. Okay, Gashamata defending. There's the castle. Interesting. Siege. Again, micro by Khazral. And again, Khazral dives. Here, Gashamata loses another one. Oh, it's so expensive to repair TCs as well, guys. It's not cheap. You spend so much wood on it. And it's it, all your focus is here. And, and then you can't focus on expanding your eco in another way to the other areas of the map. Everything's so constricted. Everything's so condensed here. It feels like Khazral might be able to finish off Gajamata here, guys. I mean, it, feel, it feels inevitable, right? I'm still wondering if Gashamata could maybe get one or two big shots on the crossbows. If you clear out the, the siege, actually, the skirms might be able to do an awful lot on their own. Lightcap dying to the TC here. 6,000 more resources collected right now for Khazral, but he does get caught out there by a camel. That will be a, that will be a dead mangonel. Khazral noticed it. There could be another Manganel that goes down. That's nice. And then this opens up, uh, up an opportunity for your Siege, but Khazral noticed it. How does he notice that when he's trying to save his other Siege weapons there? Well, uh, try, trying being the key word there because he, he didn't actually save them. But still, there was an attempt. Pretty soon, I think Khazral is going to finish this series in style. We've got villagers going forward, folks. And he was a player who has built some pretty risky castles in this series. The Bay game was insane. Oh, God. And apparently, I don't know why people are saying Huang right now. I'm going to guess this is probably a donate message. Yes, Huang apparently donated. <laughs> Thank you, Huang, for the donation. I, I imagine that was probably not the real Huang. The Age of Empires 2 Legend Huang. I, I could be wrong. Beautiful shot from Gajimata. Okay, there's a chance? Maybe? Castle? No, Castle is not going to be denied. Yikes. Okay, so... Later on today, we find out who these players are. But Gajimata's had an incredible tournament, as is Khazral. And it's going to end for them here. If this is the end for them, I think they deserve some salutes here. Uh, as we head towards the, the possible GG. Gajamata has been one of the most difficult to guess. But also has been the biggest fighter, I think, in Hidden Cup 5. Khazral has been incredible with his micro. His adaptation. Um, his, his ability to survive. Like, funnily enough, it's a similar thing for both of them. The fact that they've survived a lot of different things, but... Also so different in how they survived, right? For Khazra, it was like, I'm going to defend with so little. That was kind of the thinking for him at times throughout the tournament. He's definitely had some style moves. Definitely been getting some big highlights here or there. Here, he's using crossbows to micro down the golems. Golems are a great counter to archers. So if you're getting those kills, that's just because of your amazing micro there. He might even pull away. But yeah, Imp is on the way right now for Khazra. He's up 2-1. Winning this would mean the end of the, the uh, third place match. And a couple knights could head over there to protect those crossbows. And that's going to be castle number two for Khazral. But he doesn't have villagers going that way. It almost feels like he wants to build the castle somewhere else. I'm a bit confused about that one because I thought I saw villagers going somewhere else. Oh, shoot. He can just do both. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought he would delete that one. No, he has enough stone to have the castle on the front. Nice micro here from Khazral. Split. Takes out the Manganel. But yeah, he's just going to have castles everywhere. Crossbows get pulled away. The knights are here now to, to deal with the rest of this. And then when Imp is in, even though you just killed those crossbows, I'm sure Gajamata has been feeling it for some time. Three forward castles from the enemy and the Imperial Age. 
And he might feel like it's time to call it. Unless it's ACCM. If it's ACCM or it's Mr. Freaking Yo, they're not going to call up. Oh, GG's called. GG's called. Kozrao is our third place player in Hidden Cup 5. Well played to Kozrao. Well played to Gajimata. I, I knew the GG was probably going to come. Kozrao ends up winning. Now, what we are not going to do here is we are not going to do votes on who uh, viewers think Kozrao and Gajimata are. We are going to save the votes. We're going to keep things moving along here. And if you would like to guess on who all the players are in Hidden Cup, yet again, please go to Hidden Cup five, uh, sorry, hiddencup.com and make sure you submit your guesses over the next hour or two. Again, I'm going to get some details here for you so you have an idea of when the voting is shut down. Uh, being told the guessing competition will close between the third and final starts. Guessing will close when the first game of the final starts. Okay, so as we do the highlights here, guys, you basically have maybe 30, 40 minutes max to get your guessing done. We are going to have to close the guessing for the entirety of Hidden Cup before the first game of the final start. Just keep that in mind. This is how the third place match went. This was cool, man. Like, third place match always has a different feel from the final. Uh, these players are happy to play for an extra thousand dollars, but ultimately everyone plays to be the champion but we had some really crazy games like this strategy from Cosrail, the scouts coming in the ram the scorpion completely caught gajimata off guard this was not the type of game gajimata was expecting for bypass and from the start villagers were dying and things were messy and eventually Cosrail got the job done then in this game i mean the water focus was fun but the land focus w was really crazy. Kozrael uh, didn't really have the fishing eco he would have wanted, but he expanded into the TCs later. And he was like three town centers producing bills. Gajamata was on one town center, but Gajamata was so aggressive here. And honestly, I feel like Gajamata did enough to win this game. Just a couple moments going differently here. Castles being denied. And this should have been a Gajamata victory. Kozrael just so good at getting the timings right in defense we eventually saw quite a few elephants in this one again there were there were three castles that actually could have been denied here from Kozra so I'm not sure we have them all in our highlights Kozra lost TC's Kozra lost eco Kozra was raided everywhere but he just kept coming with Lycav and kept finding opportunities to chip away at Gajimata's attack Okay, so we might see all of them, actually. This was the first castle that maybe shouldn't have gone up. Look at this. Monks underneath the TC. Like have everywhere. Siege everywhere. Villagers are getting pre-pulled to the side here by Khazral because he knows that the siege is going in for his vills. And then he just... He barely had enough like have there. He only had four like have and was able to get the kills on the siege to allow him to finish this castle. And this was, this was basically one of many, but here's castle number two. Like... Everyone's screaming doubt confirmed the whole time as these castles struggle to go up. I I can understand getting the castles right. I can understand the defense. I do not understand how a player can end up getting every castle up, being an imp so much faster, and then getting the eco to go for the amount of elephants that he did that eventually won him the game. Insanely impressive. This was game three. This was also a doubt castle fest. <laughs> This, this was also incredibly messy. Gajimata, Gajimata initially having a pretty big lead, I felt. And then he decided to go for a forward castle. And when he went for the forward castle, Kazra was going for a defensive castle. And I thought initially that Kazra's castle, again, was not going to go up. But he had enough fills. I guess that's the key. Somebody tell Doubt. Had enough villagers building the castle. And Gajimata did not. So Kazra's castle, despite the losses, went up. And then the castle for Gajimata was denied at 90%. He actually had more failed castles or more, let's say, problematic castles in this game than any... No, I'm... never mind. I'm remembering a series King Steven played. We probably had just as many in a series that King Steven played. But moving on throughout that game, Gajimata finally wanting a win on the board. Bombard cannons, monks, and Hussite wagons. Just kept going. And won the game. And took us to the fourth game, where maybe Gajimata, if he won that, was going to have Chinese in game number five. Didn't have Chinese available in game number five. 
And could you guys tell that I'm like moving my hands around and going crazy when we're uh, when I'm even summing up the games and I'm not on camera? Sorry.